Who's here for extra credit? All right, cool. I won't. And I got you guys. <laughs> no, I uh, appreciate you guys for uh, coming out. Um, today's visibility is currency. Um, just give you like my kind of my thought process on social media, just digital presence. I mean, in 2022, I mean, it's a lot different. So this will be a little bit of my presentation. I'm going to keep it short. It's not going to be too long. And hopefully it's interesting, um, something that you can kind of take home, be able to share with your friends. So first and foremost, so today, like I said, your digital presence in 2022, what does it look like? So first and foremost, we're going to talk about personal branding, then social media in 2022. And then lastly, some strategies and resources that you guys can use and take home. All right. So first and foremost, this is me freshman year. Uh, 2014. Does anyone know what hall this is? This is I don't know if the hallways even look the same. <laughs> Which? This is Pritchard. So I lived in Pritchard my freshman year. I don't even know if the wall, the halls look the same. It doesn't look the same. So that's me, my freshman year. As you can tell, um, I didn't. I don't. I use social media in that certain way, but and also this is me in 2010 uh, when I first got my first <laughs> my first iPod Touch. <laughs> And <laughs> I found out that I can, you know, I can, uh, I can text on my iPod. So as you can tell, it's December the 27th, two days after Christmas. So you can tell that I was really excited. But I mean, you can tell just by the, the texting and like, yo, this is crazy. But it just shows how I use social media. So um, I'm not that old, but I'm old enough. All right. So um, again, my name is Kevin Stevenson. I'm a 2019 graduate of Virginia Tech. Study construction here at Virginia Tech. Um, but here I am now in front of you guys as a brand strategist, marketing photographer, videographer, kind of like the whole thing. And I actually have a, a marketing media company now that I started after school. So a little bit about that marketing media company. I've done weddings. I've done uh, work with NFL athletes with the social media platforms and also worked with artists, um, Miguel for a particular, and then uh, working with a couple of hotel brands such as IHG um, Hotels Intercontinental. So um, I said all that to kind of start just, there's just a little bit about me. I mean, I'm also part of Forever Mentor Foundation. There's a foundation out of Philadelphia. We work from uh, three phases of mentoring kids from the age of seven to 13. And then phase two will be from you know, 13 to 14 throughout college. And then phase three is to come back and see what does it look like to mentor phase uh, one. So that's a little bit about us at Forever Mentor Foundation out of Philadelphia. Um, and then here's some uh, content information. This is my company website here and then my personal website here. And it'll be back at the end of the presentation as well. So I said all of that because that's, personal, that's part of my personal brand. That's one of like the first things. When you think about personal brand is, hey, what are you known for? These are certain things that I'm passionate about, things I've done. Even my history of going to Virginia Tech as a construction major, that's all part of my personal branding. That's what I'm known for. That's how I have friends because of what I've done here at Virginia Tech. But it's also, hey, what does it look like to have that as your personal marketing company? So that's my, my terminology in saying, hey, what does it look like to promote yourself? What does it look like to, um, you know, tell a little bit more about your story? How do you even document your story? And how will people even know if you, about what you've done if you don't tell it, you don't show it, and you don't put it out in the right particular way? Um, uh, communicating, your, communicating your story. If you have a story, where are you supposed to put it? How are you supposed to tell it? In what forms, in what fashion, and what even the tools to even tell your story the right way that you want it to be perceived. So, social media. I think this is an added tool within the last, I mean, as you saw, Instagram my freshman year, but it's now a tool of your personal brand. If it's, you know, whatever you put on social media is now attached to your name, like, all the time. So it's like, what does that look like going forth in regards to your social media usage and going forth as your personal brand? All right, and then being authentic. Uh, I think we could all kind of say that we have some perception of Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn that, uh, you know, you can kind of make a life on there separate from reality. But the thing is, I want to make sure that you guys understand what it means to be authentic within that telling that story, part of your personal brand, because at the end of the day, this is who you are. You can't run away from it. You can't really necessarily escape it or make a fake life. So being authentic throughout your personal brand. All right. So has anyone ever Googled their name before? You guys like what you just saw? Kind of, sort of? Yeah? All right, so here's a small video of me kind of researching my name and kind of the links that popped up when I was researching. So I had to add the junior to make sure it's me, but my LinkedIn profile is the first thing that pops up. 
So looks nice, cool, I like it. Actually right here, this is my high school football recruiting profile from 2014. So eh, kinda not, don't like that. Here's actually my company website, my bio. Uh, that's the third link. And then here's this link right here. I did a presentation last semester uh, with Virginia Tech and it, it popped up on YouTube. Okay, great, love it. And then I have, I think one more link. I did an Instagram live. One of my friends, this pops up as like the fourth or fifth link. So as you can tell, this is kind of what pops up. This is also my personal website. So has my bio, has my information up here. This is what pops up within searching my name. So this is just to give you a little insight of like, if you, anyone types in your name, what does it look like? Um, where are you gonna be proud of it? Are you gonna like it? You know, how can we control that? So with that being said, um, searching your name, anyone could do that. Anyone can, you know, find your name, type it in. What are they going to find when they type in your name? And that's one of the kind of the quotes here is saying, your name is in rooms your feet have never even entered in yet. So what does that look like? Someone entering your name, typing in Google. What if your Instagram is the first thing that pops up? What if your Twitter is the first thing that pops up? Now your name is in that room. You have no control over what they're going to they think about, what they're going to see, what is the Instagram tweet thing that you last said. You have no control over that because now your name is in that room, your Instagram is in that room, you have no control over. So what does that mean to even look like to enter that room without um, even having control over it? All right, so this is my representation of your name being in that room without you being in there. So you might know this, what this is, it's the office, but you could just imagine someone typing in your name in Google and say, what does it look like to them just staring around? This could be a... A professional setting, it could be a club that you want to, you know, reach out to. But what does it look like to have your name, or your image, your Instagram profile in front of and display in front of every single body? So this is my funny representation of what it looks like to have your name just pop up in the middle of a setting and say, hey, what does it look like? All right, so um, I had a Zoom call with uh, Sylvia Bug. She is the uh, Chief Program Executive and General Manager at PBS. So you might know PBS as Elmo, Sesame Street. Um, Clifford. So she's the general manager kind of over all of that. So I had a brief conversation about social media with her because she probably has seen social media from all angles um, and just television, uh, media, and all in all. So this is a, just a small conversation that I've had with her in regarding social media. My question is, looking at applications, do you all look at social media, just the broad spectrum of social media? When we look at applications, do you guys look at them? So we absolutely do look at, at a minimum, I would say LinkedIn, because often you can find a lot more details about applicants there. And then of course, there are some applicants who will also put their other social channels, including Instagram or Facebook uh, on their resumes as well. Of course, it's depending on, on the job where you might or might not see uh, those links represented on an applicant's resume. I think it was surprising to me to understand that she looks at all social media channels if she can, if it pops up. So I know my freshman year, junior year, I don't think I wanted a job to look at my Instagram or my Twitter to say, hey, if I'm applying for a job or internship. So that's one of the first things that I thought about. I was like, wow, that was pretty interesting to kind of say in 2022, jobs are actually looking at your social media platforms and are looking forward to seeing them on your resume. Uh, so um, we're going to start with the big three. So Instagram, Twitter, and then my favorite is LinkedIn. Um, they each have their own particular uh, styles and tools that I like to use them for, but I'll be able to kind of go into a little bit of detail of say, hey, what does it look like for you guys to use them for each particular one? So here's another piece of our conversation in regarding the other two, Instagram and Twitter in, in particular. So kind of switching away from LinkedIn, Instagram and Twitter, I know those are one of the, the two there, or Facebook, I should say, uh, mm -hmm. one of the two other Instagram or, I mean, social media platforms that are not necessarily deemed professional, but what do you think about putting that into your resume or if someone does end up looking at it, you know, what, what's your opinion on that? That's a good question. And as someone who looks at resumes frequently and who often hires and brings people on board uh, with my team, I would not discourage that either. I would just say 
know what you're posting and, and just be a little bit cautious. If you've got your personal views or opinions up on your pages, just think about how that reflects. Um, but I would certainly encourage it. As I said uh, before, social media is the norm. So if I saw a resume with no links to any social media sites, I would probably have some questions about how that individual spends their time professionally and personally. Mm -hmm. um, so I would also encourage, think about websites like medium.com or Reddit, if you've got other platforms mm -hmm. where you have something to say, don't be afraid to say it, but just understand a little bit of the rules of the road, as I call it, and, um, and just think about who your audience is. And so as you all are talking about all of these really important topics, particularly in today's time, know your audience. That's so important. And it also applies to your social media presence as well. So like I said before, they're expecting social media. And I think that's something that's new to me that I'm still learning is that in today's time, they're looking forward to social media platforms. So now how do we even prepare for that in particular? So for Instagram in particular, um, I, first and foremost, you do not need to be, you guys come in. Um, First and foremost, you do not have to be an influencer. Um, I know in today's time, when you think of Instagram, uh, you think that you have to have it all together. You think it has to be perfect. Uh, you think you have to be, have all the equipment, that you have to have a business, that you have to be able to um, teach someone, that you always have to be able to be on your, your, get your best game at all times. So I'm here to tell you that you do not need to have your life all together. Um, I'm telling you that there's a way that you can be professional. There's a way to use your Instagram in a way that can be deemed professional and be able to be a tool for you. So to document and share your story. This is one of my favorite things because it's, only, it's like your personal journal, your personal diary, your personal storytelling element as a tool to say, hey, this is where I've come from and this is where I'm going as well. So what does it look like? Storytelling on social media, Instagram, uh, telling stories of your strengths and um, your strengths and be able to highlight that even more. So even if it's showing that you've been doing better in school, whether you're doing other organizations, it doesn't have to be up uptight, it doesn't have to be you in a, a suit and tie or uh, always in a dress and you know, high heels or whatever, but it's saying, what does it look like to just tell your story in an th authentic way that is um, being able to show what you want to be shown? So that's why I say controlling your narrative, we all have the opportunity to control what we put on these social media platforms. All right, and then the difference between the professional and then the private profiles. I'm not telling that you have to be have it a certain way. I'm not telling that you um, you have to have it in a certain way that you don't post to post anything or you post to say certain things. I'm just saying just to consider different ways to use your Instagram in an, another way. So of course, archiving old posts. Um, you guys saw the Instagram photo from 2014 of me and Pritchard Hall. Um, you guys will probably never see that ever again because this archive is gone. Um, but that's just a way of saying, hey. That needs to be gone. That's something that I wouldn't want to represent me in today's time. Not a bad thing on my end, but it's just say, hey, I would rather you look at some other nicer pictures, probably me in Florida on the beach or something, rather than just me in Pritchard Hall uh, looking like a three-year-old. So um, that's the way. Uh, right here, dedicating a post to a particular inch, a page to a particular interest. This is one of my friends, Natasha. She's at actually in veterinary school here in um, Virginia Tech, but she's made a page. Um, this documented her, her story, her journey through veterinarian school. So what does it look like posting her colleagues, um, different interests that is particular to veterinarian school. So like that's something that was interesting to me because when I was in school, we necessarily didn't do that. That wasn't something that was necessarily deemed um, pretty cool or even something that we would just even do on the end. But say, what does it look like to document your journey throughout it? Again, being authentic, you probably don't hear that three more times, four more times throughout the day because it doesn't have to be uh, perfect. And then lastly, making your page private. Um, as we know, you all have our personal lives, some things that you want to share, things that you, um, you do want to share. But what does it look like to have um, that private page? Okay, so you have your close friends, et cetera. But what does it mean to actually have that private page versus the professional page that you want someone to see? So there's some posts that, hey, I want to keep it in circle. Okay, just make it private. You have a private page. There's nothing wrong with that. But if I type in your name and your Instagram is the top thing that's going to be shown, what does it look like to have that private page or to have this page pop up in particular? Uh, or like my friend Alexis, she was going to law school. 
she made a page this documenting her journey throughout law school. So from her acceptance um, from Virginia Tech to all the way through her getting accepted to um, um, University of Pittsburgh. So that's what it looks like to um, document your journey and use an Instagram um, wherever you're you know, you seen fit. It can be, you know, art. It can be photography. But the thing is, that's something that you want to highlight. This is your own personal highlight tape in regards to Instagram in particular. And then next, Twitter. Um, I think we all love Twitter, but I think we all seen the goods and bads that come with Twitter as well. Um, so first and foremost, like the Instagram. Delete the old tweets. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever searched old tweets from high school or years ago, but um, I know I had some tweets that weren't happy, and I said, hey, what does it look like? You do not need to tell me what those words were, what you did. Um, just go home and delete them. So there's an easy way you can delete those tweets in regards to uh, searching your name. So we've probably all heard some particular story of a celebrity, you know, getting burnt by old tweets. Um, something is hard for me to say is that there's an easy way to delete these. There's, there's really is an easy way to delete some of these old tweets. Hopefully no one screenshotted them before you get big or before you get that good job. But there's, a, there's an easy way. You can search your name, search your ad name, search particular words that you might have said. I'm not going to give any examples. But um, just search your name in those examples and then your tweets can be able to be deleted. Um, of course, there's going to be some Twitter server down in you know, Arkansas somewhere that stores all our tweets. But from the public eye, you will not be able to find these tweets. Um, I'm not trying to say, you know, uh, hide you know who you were, but you also show that hey, this is not representing who you are right now. So that's why going back to your personal branding, this is something that will be able to represent you in a good way or a bad way, such as these examples. So um, just be cautious of your old tweets. I know that's kind of mundane in regards to that, but um, it happens. And for these guys and these people, um, it happens quite often than I would like. Uh, engaging people with similar interests, pretty much. What does it look like to, um, you know, just certain your tweets? There's certain tweets that you have, certain things that you need to say. It attracts certain people. So what does it look like to have those certain tweets that want to say, hey, what does it look like to, um, you know, tweet about me photography, for instance? Those people are going to be attracted to me, and then that goes into networking. What does it look like to network with those people? There's people that you can DM, um, professionals that are on Instagram that you can, you know, directly talk to. Um, I like LinkedIn better, but Twitter is just a way that, hey, what does it look like to use it professionally in that way? All right, next, my favorite is LinkedIn. Um, I think it's like the holy grail of, of, link, of social media, just on a professional note, because you have direct access to some of these decision makers um, in your industry, any industry. So whether you, you're a potter, you do photography, you're a planner, you're going to find someone that is in those decision making um, positions that can you can directly talk to talk to so this is an example like you can be able to connect if you want to with Miss Sylvia Buck um, you can um, connect with her and message her and say hey you learned about her through this presentation I'm 400% sure she would get back to you and message you but now you can say that hey I'm connected with the general manager at PBS right now uh, just through LinkedIn so that is one of the unique ways and this is uh, a little bit about our conversation in regarding LinkedIn in particular. Um, so in regards to, I know LinkedIn is one of the bigger social media platforms where it's like, hey, this is like the second year resume. But what about the students or anyone that's kind of hesitant about using LinkedIn because they don't have those big job descriptions or these past work experiences? What do you think about like past projects or just kind of like your classwork maybe? Yeah, that's a great question. And I would say folks shouldn't feel discouraged in using LinkedIn. And even if they have smaller footprints in terms of their work history or projects that they've worked on, oftentimes you can use it to link to other websites uh, if you would like, or even just provide brief snapshots. So I would say even if you have other social sites that you are active on uh, and that you feel pretty comfortable sharing those, I would encourage you to do that. Don't be afraid to use social media. Social media is a part of the norm these days. Yeah. So don't be afraid of it. But I would just say, depending on the industry, depending on the type of job that you're applying for, you absolutely want to know a little bit more about the company, uh, perhaps its culture, look at their website to see what you see reflected on their social media pages. And that may provide you with some insight 
as to how to shape and form your social media presence. So I think it's pretty straightforward to see what does it look like to use LinkedIn in this particular way. I know for me in particular, um, I did not have all the work experience um, of like my classmates. I didn't have an internship every single, you know, every single summer or every single year. Um, what does it look like to just share your projects? Um, I think that's one of the things that kind of stumps, it stumped me, but I know it stumps a lot of other students in regards to saying, what does it look like to just share your favorite classroom project? Um, I know there's certain things that I've done when I was an undergrad that I'll say, hey, what does it look like to just share, hey, I worked on this project for, you know, three weeks, two weeks, had a good grade, but this is something that was particular to me in my uh, industry. So um, right here is just a, a share of like the example. So at the top, this is um, KT Market Media Group. This is my company in particular. But then right here is this a, um, a project that I had for two months. So I'm not saying you have to have a particular thing where I, I was at a job for a year or six months and whatnot. I just had this particular project only for two months, but it's something I really wanted to show and highlight. So I don't want to discourage you from saying, hey, I don't have this big job or this internship that I, you know, necessarily not proud of and say, hey, what does it look like to just share some of your small recent wins? And then, of course, you have some other experiences here. And so, uh, skills and endorsements, I don't know who's on LinkedIn right now, but skills and endorsements are one of the bigger things that you can see uh, on LinkedIn that people really care about. So right here at the top, people management, Microsoft Word, and customer service, those are like my top skills that people have endorsed. So pretty much that's people endorsing you. They're putting your their name on you saying, hey, whatever this skill is, I know that Kevin can complete it or I know anyone in this room can complete it. So um, also what I like is regarding LinkedIn is that it's endorsed by four colleagues of Virginia Tech. So part of the link, the networking part is that just someone could just go through your LinkedIn profile and say, hey, oh, they went to Virginia Tech. I'm going to just reach out to you in regardless because you go to Virginia Tech. It's this power of networking. And I've seen it so useful because me coming as a construction background, I necessarily didn't have a lot of people in photography and media and whatnot. What does it look like to just, you know, build up that, that social media presence? presence on LinkedIn even after school. And then recommendations. I think each and every one of us had to have a recommendation to, you know, submit to college or, you know, some particular program. But this is a digital version of it. Um, just like you had to talk to your teacher uh, saying, hey, I need a recommendation for my application to Virginia Tech. Can I get it? Can you sign it, et cetera, and put it in a letter. But this is a way to have it digital. This is a way to say, hey, um, I know you're my favorite teacher, but I would love for you to make a public recommendation, almost like a Yelp review for you. So it's like now people can go to your LinkedIn profile and see what people have to say uh, word for word, and they can even reach out to them themselves and say, hey, is it true or not? Because sometimes, you know, when it comes to the paper uh, recommendations, either you have even told the teacher what to say or they just hype it up all the way through. But saying something like this that is public, um, and I have to admit, this is my friend's Corey, so I have not done this, but it's one of the things that I need to uh, hold myself accountable to do something like this in regards to the recommendations. All right, so what did I post? Um, I know that's one of the things is like, hey, I'm not in the professional world. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to even put up there. So in regards to what do I post, it goes back to like those classroom projects, uh, something that, you, that interests you in school, in class, or even um, you know, a volunteer project that you worked on outside of school. What, that's something that is important for LinkedIn, of course. Next, interact and network with people in your field you're interested in. So much like Twitter and Instagram, you can, of course, be able to DM people, message them privately, et cetera. But through LinkedIn, it is made so much better um, in a way that you can be able to directly, like I said before, directly uh, message the people that are in these decision-making um, positions. So what does it look like to message the, the CEO of a company that you like? And for example, I was able to uh, message Craig Peters, who's the CEO of Getty Images. So I don't know if you, what, if you guys know what Getty Images are, but Getty Images is where you see all your celebrities and has a little tag, says Getty Images, uh, one of the biggest companies out there. And I was like, you know what, why not try to reach out to him? So I sent a little message to him, hope all is well. Um, I'm paraphrased and I say I just wanted to gain some more information about Getty Images and maybe potentially be able to work with them. He actually responded. I was kind of surprised and not going to lie to you, uh, but to say that he was able to just say, you know, giving honest information and feedback, that was useful for me. And like in, back in 2014, me trying to reach out to him would be either try to call, 
either have to go to New York myself and try to pop up at his office or, you know, be able to just know him through a friend. But just literally through LinkedIn, I was able to message him directly and he was able to get back to me and maybe I think the next day or maybe that evening. So um, that's something that was just really, really useful. And he also gave me actually an email to approach in a different way. So that's one of the things I wanted to say, hey, what does it look like to interact through LinkedIn in this particular way? All right, and then LinkedIn Premium. Um, I know this is one of the things, this is not even sponsored. I just love LinkedIn in this particular way. But LinkedIn Premium is a way that you can be able to use it um, in a, a better tool for you in, as you grow. So in regards to, for instance, uh, email credits, you do not have to be connected with this person to message them. Um, sometimes with, through LinkedIn, you have to be able to be connected with them. They have to accept you into their network for you to message them. But through these email credits, you can be able to say, hey, I'm bypassing the connection. I just want to reach out to you directly. What does that look like? Next is you can see who viewed your profile. Unlike Instagram or Twitter, you can't tell who viewed your profile unless they like three of your pictures or they retweeted something or they just want to get your attention. But through LinkedIn, you can be able to see directly who um, viewed your profile. So if it's someone in California that works with the company that you actually want to work with, you can actually go back and message them and say, hey, I saw you read my profile. Does, you know, you can't be able to have a message particular to that. So that's one of the things I love about LinkedIn. And lastly, uh, LinkedIn learning cur courses. So I'm a product of YouTube University. Uh, so pretty much learning different things, looking at YouTube, the how-tos and whatnot. But the thing about YouTube versus LinkedIn courses is that through LinkedIn, you can be able to have a credit or a certificate towards on LinkedIn that people can show. So uh, for instance, I was able to do like a drone um, certification just through LinkedIn and they were to say, hey, now you can have a certification that you can be able to show um, your peers, network, etc." So the steps to kind of jumpstart your digital presence, kind of going back to square one. What does it look like to your personal branding? You gotta be able to plan. What do you want to use your personal branding for? What is something that you need to be able to look forward to? Say, hey, what do I want my personal brand to be at in a particular time um, going forward using your social media platform? Next, LinkedIn. I'm gonna probably press that the whole day. But what does LinkedIn look like for you? Um, in particular, I feel like everyone should have it at least. Um, be able to put certain things on there, such as your experience, your work, um, your um, your uh, major, any particular extra particular uh, activities that is just particular to you that builds into your personal branding. Next, network. Like in LinkedIn or just anywhere, what is it like? Where can someone find you? How can someone contact you? How can someone be able to see who you are um, before your name is even entered into that room? Next. Uh, take professional headshots tomorrow. So I don't know if you guys know, but part of this presentation is that we're taking headshots tomorrow. So um, this is just a little explanation of like what it means to even have those headshots taken and have professional photos taken um, either by me or anyone. So um, really quickly, I don't know if anyone saw this movie, Self Made, um, uh, The Life of Madam C.J. Walker. But this is just a little representation of what I hope each and every one of us can have this feeling and saying, what does it mean to have your name in that room and be able to understand it? Oh, darling, isn't that W.E.B. Du Bois? <gasps> oh my God, it's, it's time. W.E.B. Du Bois in the flesh. Come on, mama, let's say hello. Billy D. Winnie, old man. I'd like to introduce you. Madam C.J. Walker. You know who my mama is? Why, sure. You're the lady who stood up to Harvard's Huckleberry Booker T. Washington at his conference. That was you. So pretty much from there is saying, hey, what does it look like to, if your name is Googled, that someone already knows who you are, your accomplishments, in a great way that is saying, hey, this is now a great place to network, be able to see in this particular video, uh, to be a tool for you in the future. So does anyone want to try looking at the LinkedIn right now? Let's go. You wanna? We can type it. I can type it into Google right now. It's kind of like old. No, I, I, that's what we. That's what we're here for. I'm bringing up in the front of class. You go ahead. So in this particular, I want to show you guys what can we do to look at your LinkedIn profile right now. Some things that we can fix. Some things that we can add. Some things that we kind of just change around. Say, hey, what is? can help me like or comment or something, which is a good thing. 
But as we can say, she commented, congrats. But that's about it. <laughs> Two months ago. So much like in her bio, um, I like to say, hey, what does it look like to be graduating? Um, what does it look like to be, you know, sharing your different experience just throughout the day? So um, there's, of course, some different ways that you can say, hey, what does it look like to ask particular questions? Um, be able to say, hey, if you're looking for an internship, for some people that may, you can say, hey, I'm looking for an internship in particular. Um, yeah, but let me go back here. You're fine. Um, oops. Um, what do you think about this experience? I have a lot more experience. You have a lot more? So yeah, so she says she has a lot more experience that she would love to be able to showcase. So of course, I do love to be able to show the descriptions of your job titles. Even if it's in the sports, we can be able to say, what does it look like to know game policies and whatnot, okay? Yeah. So my thing is, what does it look like to have some of the smaller things that maybe, um, you know, projects, schoolwork, we say, hey, this is what I've done through school because I know that you've been able to work in these particular jobs, but say, what does it look like to show particular projects that are just interest you in particular? And then let's see, what about skills? Not bad, but the thing is, at the same time, what does it look like to even have people endorse them for you too? So even if it's your peers, what does it look like to help say, hey, can you endorse me on sports writing? Can you endorse me on uh, Adobe Audition? So those are particular things. And of course, here's the other extra stuff that you know just adds on to say, hey, what does it look like to be more relatable uh, to someone that connects? So thank you. Thank you. And I'll put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. Anyone else like to show their LinkedIn profile? Come on. You can just type it in there. I don't know if you can. There we go. Uh, yeah. Got you. So boom. You got to stay up here, too. Okay. You stay in here. I don't know. Let's see. If I. So first and foremost, I'm not connected with her. So I'm connecting with her right now through this presentation, but saying, what does it look like to connect? And it says, hey. You can follow our message. We encourage you to totally connect with people you know. So, of course, Craig Peters, I did not know him, the, the CEO of Getty, but I sent him a connection anyway. Um, but you're able to message someone separately before connecting, and then what does it look like to connect? So, just send to connect, but also you can, you can add a note. That's one of the things, say, if you wanted to add Miss Sylvia Bug from earlier in the presentation, and saying, hey, um, I sent the invitation to connect. I also want to send a note that, hey, I was at Kevin's presentation. He brought you up. This is why I'm connecting with you. So that's what it looked like. And then send. Hopefully, she'll accept my connect. But um, what are you thinking? What's first and foremost? Um, I need an about. I've been like trying to figure out yeah. what to say in it for the longest time. And then I would say both of my pictures need updating. Gotcha. So hopefully you're signed up for tomorrow. Okay. Okay, perfect. So she said, new picture. That's why we're having the new pictures for tomorrow. Say, so, hey, what does it look like? You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have your hair done all the way. Um, I just need you guys to just show up, bring your smiles and whatnot, okay? All right, so what's next? So the about. So this is where the about would be. I would love for you just, even if it's not perfect, put it up there. All right, that's what I've been, like, freaking out about. Mm. Like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Got so, you. Yeah. So it's always the... Uh, for instance, like the bios, you don't want to keep it too long, but at the same time, uh, you do want to show this little snapshot of you know who you are, whether it's your age, whether it is your major, because we are in school. Um, you know, what's this, like I said before, what are your goals? What are some things that you want to work with? And how can people even help you if they go to your profile? Okay, what's next? What do you think? Um, I probably need to add more of my experience. Mm -hmm. And then I know that, like, I went to another workshop where they said, like, people look at your activity. Yeah. So I've been trying to. They said to, like, download it on your phone and yeah. like, kind of use it like it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. I'm so glad you said that. Like, constantly, like, having activity. But so, yeah. I mean, uh, just to piggyback off of you in regards to that, um, I think of it as the professional Facebook. Um, and I don't post, like, your aunt and grandma on there, per se. 
I mean, you can. Um, but this is a professional Facebook. You might see the CEO of uh, Getty Images come across your feed. What does it look like to comment on something like that? So we can kind of go through the home page, and I'll be able to show what does it look like to maybe interact with certain people. And let's see, what do you think next? Um, I only put work experience, so probably need to add like schoolwork and other things. Yeah, I, I like the, the personalized projects of schoolwork or projects in particular. This shows a little bit of a difference between what it looks like to you know be in the professional world, but hey, these are some things I work on during school. This is one of my hardest projects, but I got an A. I got a you know I got a good grade on it. And then what'll be even plus to that is even have your teacher rec recommend you through LinkedIn to say, hey, what does it look like? Um, I worked on this project with her. She did great. She was really you know showed her it challenged her, but in a good way. So anything else in particular? It's, it's part. It's part of your. It's part of your journey. It's part of your story. So I. Li I like it in particular. Um, I know it can even connect to people that even transfer from other schools. So that's even like I say. Hey, what does it look like? That might just interest someone else to say. Hey, I saw you. I saw you studied at Mary Washington. So now mm -hmm. instead of me not only knowing you from Virginia Tech, what if someone knew you from Mary Washington in particular? Okay. Um, and then skills. Um, so here's one of the things here is like, what does it look like to endorse someone? So. Um, when I'm connected with her, I will be able to endorse her in particular to that. And then, but yeah. So, first and foremost, just make that bio. Okay. Anything in particular, and then we can be able to talk and say, hey, what does it look like to get it all right? Okay, thank you. Cool. Anyone else in particular? A bad one? Come on. I forgot you, Jax. A bad one. A bad one means not having one at all. So, does anyone have does not have a LinkedIn? Okay, we're getting somewhere. So, sure, that's your name. That's your name. All right, let's. I'm gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna see see all results, and then we might have to type in Virginia Tech at the end. Let's see. One second. Uh, yeah, there we go. You can type it in now. This is it? Oh, uh, yeah. Wait. <laughs> Let's try it. I think so. Let's see. Let's see. This might be you. Oh, that's it. Well, <laughs> I, I really thought I had a picture of You did? <laughs> yeah, but that's not. <laughs> oh, we got to stay up here. You saw everyone else. Come on. Come on. All right. So I'm going to connect with you first and foremost. Let's cool. see. Connect. Again, you got a personalized note if you like. Um, if, for instance, like if I'm in a, um, a networking um, space or anything like that, I'm saying, hey, I met you at this particular event. Um, nice to know you. I would love to, um, you know, connect with you further. So that's why I would add the note section there. And then I'm going to send this. Okay, it's pending. But first and foremost. Yeah, so I really was on it more got when you. I had my internship at the chamber okay. in 11th, 12th grade. Got you. And there really should be a picture of it, but <laughs> I don't know where it is. Yeah. It's me with a Virginia Tech shirt. Got you. So maybe, I mean, it disappeared somewhere, but yeah. um, <laughs> that's when, again, I'm going to push the pictures for tomorrow. I would love for you to come out tomorrow, take those pictures, Ooh. and just so you can just have one. I don't know about tomorrow. But tomorrow, why not? So I look kind of bad right I now. Got you. But reschedule. But look, let's, let's play like this. I'm here tomorrow. Take it. If you don't like it, send it to your mom at least. And then, you know, go yeah. from there. All right, so what's next? What, what do you just, okay. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> the bio. Yeah. So again, the bio. That's really one of the first things that you see. I'm going to show my profile too, so I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be mean. Um, but again, the bio. Of course, if this is something, I would love for you to have it, okay? Yeah. You you seen it all, so there all right. Is. So then, yeah, activity, the work experience, what does it look like? Again, work experience doesn't necessarily have to be a job. I don't want you to get stuck in saying, hey, it has to be a job. It can be a project. It can be some classwork. It can be something particular to some of your interests. So don't get stuck in the hey, it has to be a job experience thing. And then, okay, I love the volunteer work that you have up here. And then 
Say, what does it look like to have some more skills? Boom. Yeah. All right. Thank you, man. You want to go next? All right. <clears throat> yeah, just type it in. It's going to pop up at the top. There you go. Boom. Let me see. I'm a. Yeah, we already connected. So that's one of the things where at Virginia Tech, if I see you go to Virginia Tech, I'm probably going to connect with you just off the strength of Virginia Tech. That's my mindset, but I think that's the mindset of some other people too, saying, hey, what does it look like to just go to Virginia Tech? And then as you even leave school, you don't see Virginia Tech has a strong network, has a strong connection. Like even like you, you're from New York. What does it look like to go to New York and then say, hey, I go to Virginia Tech and then connect with people? But this is social media, so many other people. So boom. So what, what do you think? What's first and foremost? Uh, well, first, I'm a senior. I don't know why it says first. I need to change that. I don't know how you, do you change that? On your Where? Or I have to write next to my name that says first. Like, I think okay. I'll, sh I'll show you that. But that's your title. So you can be able to control your title, which what's on, um, on LinkedIn. So yes, you can change that. Um, probably a new picture. New picture. It's not that old, but I really want to <laughs> change it. Really Got you. <laughs> so again, tomorrow, we have pictures. Taking them tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to have the link for you guys if you want to sign up at the end of this. What else do you think? Um, my bio. Your bio? Yeah, it has to go. Or at get changed a little bit. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. So, uh, for instance, you can, um, you can do it in third person, but sometimes I like first person too as well. So what does it look like to say, even talk about yourself, highlighting some of the accomplishments again, what does it look like to show some of your goals and your aspirations so someone can help you, they can see your profile and say, hey, what does it look like to connect with you, maybe give you a job opportunity? So, boom, what else do you think? Um, uh, probably updating my experience a little bit. Like, gotcha. Because uh, some things like I'm not working in, some things are Gotcha. Doing. Yeah, so something would need to change. Yeah, so pretty much, for instance, I know it's, it's kind of like using it as Facebook. Uh, downloading the app is pretty good, but you can tell when someone's like just made it and then they left it alone, and then when they they're constantly on it. So you know, if you're on it, you probably see like, "Hey, I haven't worked that job in two years or so." So, yeah. Of course, I mean, you have a lot of your experience up here. You just probably have to update the dates. You know, what does it look like you done? So boom. What else do we think? Probably could ask some more skills just to kind of just show a little bit more of what you are, you know, and then that's when people can be able to endorse. For instance, you can say, hey, uh, endorse, this is what it looks like, and then now saying, hey, I endorse her in regards to cultural awareness. And then here we go with some of the other extra stuff, and then boom. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I'm going to show my profile a little bit of some things that I've done. Again, this is not necessarily the perfect way to do it, but this is the way I've done it. It's worked for me, and maybe it could work for you all. So, I, in particular, I do have it as a creator profile, just so like I'm a photographer, videographer, I'd be able to show my work a little bit better. So, um, this is the title piece right here at the top in regards to saying you can kind of put this wherever you want it to be in particular. So, I did say partner at K3MMG, which is my company, but also I want to say socialpreneur and also a visionary content connoisseur. So that's a little bit about me. Just off the back, what does it look like? Um, this is a little tag around the picture that shows, hey, what does it look like to this your picture and they have this little green mark and it says, um, we're open, open to work. So for instance, I'm out of school, I'm open to work, take on new jobs, but then there's another thing on the other side that says, now hiring. So those are some of the people from the other side say, hey, what does it look like to now hire? And then um, I did, in particular, did put hashtag say talks about, um, that's pretty in particular to me. And then uh, <clears throat> I know this is kind of from this way. So one of the things I like the most is through your activity, you can be able to um, pretty much pin. Like, yeah, you, you know, you have a pin tweet or a, a pin post you can be able to have featured posts at the top of your profile. So in for instance, I said, hey, we're having this presentation. I wanted to pin it to the top of my profile. So um, also, I shot at the Steelers and Ravens game. So I want everyone to know, like, hey, I shot at the football game. So, But you can be able to kind of change this up and say, hey, what does it look like to add a new post, an article, a link, or the picture? 
So when you go to my profile, you'll be able to see some of the highlighted things that I've done in which say, what does it look like to say, highlight some of your projects, something that you've accomplished, or even a big question that you might have for some people. Activity, um, so like I am trying to be interactive on there like a Facebook, like an Instagram. Sometimes I just take it off. I mean, it's social media at the end of the day, so it can take up your time, but at the end of the day, what does it look like to at least try to be on there once or twice a week, kind of engaging? So, um, for instance, I have a couple posts that I've done, but then also, hey, what does it look like to maybe comment? Um, yeah, so, but so this is all of my activity. Um, I'm doing Instagram Live on Thursday. That's nothing to do with you all, but... Um, yeah, so I kind of use it like, but the thing is, one of the things that is part of your comments is, hey, what does it look like to comment on another post? So, um, question? Does it show, like, your activity only when you comment or share, or does it show, like, if you like something? So her question was, does it only show if you're commenting or if you just like and share? So it's both. Um, if you like um, something, it's going to show to your feed as well. liking things that are um, like really strong politically or just like views in general wise. Um, I don't know, what do you have like, uh, do you have opinion on So yeah. pretty much, this is how it will come up on your own feed, on someone else's feed. So it says, hey, Kevin commented on this or Kevin liked this. This says, I usually hate sounding like a broken record, but I'm on this topic because I, I will make an exception. So that's something I commented on. So that's something that everyone's gonna see. Everyone's gonna either say, they said that I liked it uh, you can either love messages. Let me see, show you. But like, you can either like, uh, celebrate, support, love, find it insightful, or find it curious. So the thing is, if I like this message, it's gonna pop up at the top saying, "Hey, Kevin liked this message. Kevin loved this message. Kevin supported this message." So yes, uh, discouraging. I just say, just be cautious of what you like what you commented on. I'm not saying, hey, not to have your own views, but if you do like it, just know this is going to be attached to your name. So one thing I would say is I have a friend who was looking at a government job, hey, everybody, um, and they were told by a mentor, scrub anything that you have on your account that is political, right? So whether you like a person or don't like a person, yeah. be apolitical when it comes to who you are on social media because you never know who somebody really supports one way or the other. And yeah. You don't want that to be the cost you not to get a job. So anything that you have on your account that is going to put you in a box that could be in a situation like that, I would yeah. say just share on, on the side of caution. And to add to that, um, part of the conversation I did not show with Ms. Sylvia Buck is that um, there is particular jobs that you go after, they have their own IT policies as well. So they don't go through your Instagram, they don't go tell you what you can and cannot post, that you're part of that job. So that is something to be cautious about. If there is a part of their IT policies, um, I know in particular she shared a story with me saying, hey, um, she made an Instagram and the IT department actually reached out to her saying, hey, is this you? Like they, they found her profile and asked, is this you? So she had to make sure that, hey, whatever she's posting, is hers is a private page, of course, but the thing is, they found it, they saw it, and now this is part of her personal branding in regards to um, her social media platform. So, I'll just add to that. Yeah. I, I gave the government example, but my husband works in finances, and he has also been told, don't put yeah. anything on social media. And so he, he just has social media accounts, so he can see stuff, yeah. but he doesn't post anything. Like, so he can see family on Facebook and stuff like that. So that's another way to be able to, to be there not, yeah. You know. So yeah, I mean, any jobs, any particular position, they don't have an IT policy. As you saw with those examples from earlier, those celebrities and whatnot, they're searching for it, they're looking at it, just how they can search your name and those tweets that they may be attached to your name, they can find those tweets and it can cause you some trouble down the road. So yes. Um, so yeah, again, this is going through my, say, hey, anything that I commented on, then it shows up and pops up. So that's why I'm always cautious. It's different from Instagram or Twitter. I mean, of course, I mean, it shows that you liked it, but this blasts it in front of everybody. So if you like it, if you like this post, it's gonna show that, hey, Kevin, Kevin loves this. It's gonna pop up in front of everyone as they scroll by. So it's not like, hey, so think of a like as almost like another post. 
because it's going to be posted in front of every single body. So again, uh, when I liked this, it showed the whole original message and then showed uh, I liked it. So this is like a little bit of what it looks like to, in particular, interact on, um, on LinkedIn. Uh, one thing I would show on me is my bio in particular. So for me, I am a little different. Um, I'm a little bit more direct. But from the first little bit, I say I'd rather you look at my website than my LinkedIn profile. I've made a personal website that um, I feel like is a little bit more than on LinkedIn because LinkedIn doesn't let me be as creative as I want to. And I could be able to show that too. But um, I'd rather you look at my LinkedIn, uh, my website first, then my LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is kind of, you know, a little boxy. But this is what my bio looks like. I'm a 24-year-old media brand strategist, entrepreneur, philanthropist, philanthropist uh, who has been able to make my journey full of limitless thinking and decision. I am a Miami, Florida native by way of Lawrenceville, Virginia. I'm a recent graduate of Virginia Tech who majored in construction management. Being multidisciplinary allows me for a unique perspective my life purpose to honor God throughout my journey and be able to let my journey be an inspiration to others. So that's my bio. Kind of shows you what I'm a little bit about. What I, anything that I post, I want to be able to go towards this bio as well. A um, little bit of my experience shows a little bit of those projects. Again, these are like two month, two month projects. So it doesn't have to be a full time job or, or took a thing. But hey, what does it look like to show the pictures? What does it look like to show a little bit of the past work? Of course. Um, you do have to make sure that you're not sharing any information from Virginia Tech because that could be a whole other thing there with, you know, privacy. But what does it look like to just share a little bit of information about your, your current projects or something that you've been able to work on? Again, education. Uh, this is, again, this is the license and certification part that I, I found useful. This is a drone class that I took that was really small. But it just shows, it's like a little extra. Say, hey, this is some of my interest. Uh, volunteering, work. Um, and then here's what it looks like to have the endorsements of, you know, your skills. So I have, I just put all the skills that I could ever think of and, um, you know, just put them up there. So they're kind of like another interest. And then um, organizations, another interest and causes that I either support or like. So, but yeah, that's a little bit about LinkedIn. Any questions in regards to LinkedIn in particular? Cool. So, like I said before, professional headshots tomorrow. I think we've seen some examples of why we need some <laughs> in particular. Um, why they're important, of course, it would be nice to have. Um, and what do you wear? I know that's a question. Um, what do you wear? You don't have to have the suit. Sometimes, yes, I like it. You lo I love it. But what does it look like to have a t-shirt? May have a nice picture, okay? So, um, Please come out tomorrow if you can. If you haven't signed up, you can scan this right here. I'm going to leave it up for a few minutes um, so you can scan it and sign up for some times. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect, but I just love to capture you, get some good pictures to you. Maybe your mom will like them at least. And so, um, But I would love for you to post it on Instagram, Twitter, et cetera. But this is a start to your professional, um, professional digital presence. And then um, here's some resources that you can be able to download off of this link. This is a different link here that you can scan. Um, the what do I even say ebook is an ebook that I made with some examples of like that LinkedIn profile that I sent to the CEO. That's something that I shared in this ebook in particular, saying, hey, what does it look like to send a message to a CEO? What does it look like to uh, send a message to someone that you want to interact with, that you want to connect with? Um, I am willing to do one-on-one -on -one social media help. If anyone wants to go through a bio, anyone wants to understand more of what I need to post on my Instagram or I want to make a new Instagram, I'm willing to help if you can, if you want. Um, I also don't put a list of books that I've read or I think will be useful to you all. Um, LinkedIn learning courses that I think will be useful and Instagram pages, of course, and then some YouTube links. So all this will be on this link right here. If you scan it, um, I'll be able to send you all that information and you'll be able to download this presentation so you can have it for later. So surprise, um, has anyone doesn't have a ticket really quickly? I don't think you can, I don't think you can have this. This is, this is for, this for the, uh, the students. It's a surprise. So I have a LinkedIn premium account that I'm giving away. 
But maybe you can give it to someone. <laughs> All right, so with the help of some friends, um, I was able to have some sponsors uh, sponsor three months of LinkedIn Premium. Um, LinkedIn Premium, I mean, it's even expensive for me, uh, but it's $60 a month, but we're going to be able to do three months for free uh, just so you can be able to use it. It's a... Uh, it's, a, it's almost like a verified Instagram, a verified, verified Twitter that does give you a little bit of uh, a bump when it comes to networking. So I love it when it comes to either reaching out to a colleague or reaching out to someone that's in the professional um, you know, world that say, hey, I would love to connect with you. When they see that LinkedIn premium, they're like, okay, cool. He's kind of serious about networking here. Or he's serious about you know, just messaging me right now. So, and again, with the other things of, hey, what does it look like to know someone looked at your profile? you know, and see their name and then be able to reach back out to them. So uh, with that being said, um, Minds of Medicine is one of my sponsors, my man Sonny right here. Um, he's a Virginia Tech student as well, graduated. Um, but he has a podcast and he helps sponsor this uh, gift. One of my friends, Nikayla, she's a photographer out of the DMV area. My friend uh, and client, uh, Ida Joyce um, from Virginia, and then Dominique, who is a travel influencer from Miami, helped sponsor these three months of LinkedIn Premium. Um, pretty much they all use social media as a tool. So Sonny has a podcast. He uses Instagram. He uses LinkedIn to help, you know, build his social media platform, his branding. So this is why they support this particular thing of LinkedIn premium. So with that being said, I'm going to pick a, a number here. See, you almost lost out. Yeah, <clears throat> All right, let's see. Are all of them the same? Do I have to say the whole number? Let's see. Uh, last three is zero two zero. I know I took a lot of tickets out, so I might be calling a lot. <clears throat> let's see, zero zero two. Ah, that's mine. Huh? <laughs> 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 well, game's over. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Um, if you guys did sign up for, um, and did give a um, RSVP, or if you did not RSVP, please sign this uh, sheet of paper here. Um, I might be doing more gifts, but I have to reach out to you, so I need your contact information to you know, potentially give some more gifts out. So um, if anyone hasn't, I'm going to get your contact information after this. But um, if anyone, oops, oh, where am I at? Yeah, so this is my contact information. Um, please, I mean, connect with me on LinkedIn uh, if you can. Let me put my name back up there. Um, Kevin Stevenson, these are my contact information here. Uh, my website, my Instagram, my email. Please reach out to me uh, with any questions that you have. Um, again, if you have the link, I'm going to put the link back up there. But if you need the link to download or get any information, um, please reach out to me. And then um, that'll be it. So. If you have an RSVP, please have sign the sheet up here. And then uh, any questions and answers? Any questions for me? So for headshot, um, is jewelry professional? Like earrings or? Say, say jewelry? Yeah. Yeah. So I say just keep it subtle. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant. But yes, earrings are fine. Pearls. Yeah, the pearls are always a good one uh, for the women. And then a uh, pearl necklace or, you know, a subtle necklace is always good. Um, what do you suggest for hair? For, like for, for black women? I mean, I say... <laughs> no, nah, of course. Uh, I'll let you... Uh, you want to share? Uh, for hair, for, yes, black for hair women. For black women. So, so you can, I mean, like, I think any woman can do natural hair, right? Yeah. Like, um, it's all about it looking neat when it's natural. Yeah. Right. Uh, so how you have your hair is fine now. I probably wouldn't wear a headband in a um, in a professional photo shoot, but um, I think you're fine in your normal natural hair. Okay. Yeah, I say be comfortable. That's that's one of my main things is be comfortable. It's like a kid's camp outside. No, nah, that's uh. That's. Yeah. I mean, as well, mentors for kids, I used to do that when I was here, too, so uh, I can only imagine. Um, but, yes, I say be, uh, be comfortable. I want you guys to be comfortable. I don't want you to wear a hairstyle that you think is perfect or think is going to be, you know, professional. I want you guys to be your, your natural self.